On Your Bike, proudly sponsored by North East Lincolnshire Council and NG. Cycling in the first episode really took it out of me, trying to keep up with the Curtain Cycling Club on a mammoth trek from Curtain to Barton. So today, I felt my legs needed a rest, and what better way to still explore the area on wheels than a trip out on an electric bike? This time, I'm in Cleethorpes, where I'll pick up an e-bike before setting off along the resort's long coastline, showing what's on offer here for cyclists and tourists alike. Pickerock is located along the Kingsway and is the resort's first electric cycle shop. The company have been operating for just over a year and their passion is electric bikes. As well as providing a bespoke service, the shop offers a wide range of services from converting bikes to e-bikes and servicing them. They even create some very funky designs. Specialist Andy and Richard have many years of experience in building custom electric bikes. Why did you decide to set up this business first of all? Because e-bikes are the future, whether people like it or not. It's, uh, it's coming in, it's another form of transport, it keeps the, uh, if you're using it to commute to work, it's clean, it's green, it's, it's good for the environment. It's good for your well-being, it gets you out and about, and there's more people living longer, so let's get fitter. It's all a matter of the individual's needs. I mean, I've been using one for seven years now, since I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, and it's kept me mobile. So, for me, it's an essential piece of travel kit. And I believe you make the bikes here as well? We design some specific bikes for people, people with uh, disabilities that might have had new knees or ankles. We can alter pedals, ad adaptations and things like that, so we can get you pedalling. Okay. Also, if you've, you get a lot of people over 40 that have lost a lot of confidence. You never forget how to ride a bike. Sometimes you just don't ride a bike, so mm. I take them out one-to-one -one courses and we get them going again. Why is Cleethorpe such a fantastic place to cycle? Look at the view. It's, 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 it's great. The, the cycle infrastructure has been starting to be established and the council are forward thinking and they're starting to put it in there. We've got an excellent highways department. We work closely with the, the uh, people in there and we, we're getting on now. We're, uh, we're starting to put the paths in and everything. Excellent. So they're now involving us at the beginning, at the beginning of stage of things. So we're not just chipping in at the end. Involved in the beginning. Sue Coulson runs a company called Battery Bike based in Lincolnshire. The business is this year celebrating its 10th anniversary and has extensive knowledge in e bikes. Sue, the power of electric, what is so great about e bikes? Absolutely so easy to ride. So if you can ride a bicycle, you can ride an electric bike, but they take the strain out of riding. So as you pedal, senses that you're pedalling and switches the power on to help and then you can choose on the handlebars different levels of assistance so if you've got a hill or a headwind you can increase that assistance up if you're on the flat you might want to just drop that back down again so just take the strain out of riding very excited about riding this e-bike it certainly feels very different to a standard bike my first port of call is Cleethorpe's Pier. It opened in 1873 and cost £8,000 to build. The original pavilion was destroyed by a fire in 1903. A new one was built two years later, halfway along the pier. In 1968, the pavilion saw a significant investment of £50,000, making it one of the most modern on the East Coast. It's now got a new lease of life and is thriving as Papa's Fish and Chips restaurant. Tim Mickelbra is the honorary vice president of the National Peers Society and certainly knows a thing or two about the Peers past. What's the history of the Pier first of all? Well, the, the Pier was really built for the railway company back in 1873. It was very, very plain at first and then they realised they needed some form of attraction. So 
the length, then length of the pier was 1,200 feet and they built a pavilion out to sea. So that pavilion was destroyed by fire. And then they decided to build a new pavilion in 1905, which is actually the present pavilion because they decided it would be best to have a pavilion nearer to the sea end so people can, can go to it. And then during the war there was the idea that the Germans, in the event of an enemy invasion, would actually land on the end of piers. Now to me that's a mad idea because of course you see with a pier we're right in the centre of the town. If there were going to be any enemy invaders they would choose little sort of nooks and coves. But sadly the order went out for the pier to have a big section cut off it and so the pier had its long length removed in the late 1940s. They used some of the uh, ironwork to build a stand at Leicester City Football Club, the old Filbert Street Grand, and some of it to build Wonderland. Um, and so we just had a short pier, 335 feet. It had various things like uh, summer shows. But by the late 1970s, these were becoming increasingly what the people weren't wanting to see. Um, they sold the pier, the council did to a private owner. For a time, they tried attractions, they didn't work out. The pier was then bought by a nightclub owner, Mark Mayer, who ran it very successfully as a nightclub. And that's what the pier was for around about just under 30 years. And then a couple of years ago, it was put up for auction. It failed to reach its reserve price. A gentleman called Brian Huxford took it on. It cost lots of money in restoring it to its present glory. Uh, it won the National Pier Society Pier of the Year Award. But then all of a sudden, he decided to put it up on the market again. Um, it was bought by Papa as a successful fish and chip restaurant, converted into what's supposed to be the largest fish and chip shop in the country. Um, it's been very, very successful, very, very busy during the summer, but of course we'll wait to see what happens in the winter. How important are piers to seaside towns? Well, in a place like Cleethorpe, they're right at the front. It's, it's, a, an, it's an iconic structure, as a lot of piers are up around the country. The buses go here, it's on the sea, it's one of the first things you can see. Because, of course, the thing about other attractions, you can say it's a winter gardens or whatever, and people don't know really where they they can be found unless they know the area. The pier, you know it's going to be at the seafront. I think that's what creates the uh, interest because a lot of people have still got this maritime heritage about them. They like the idea of walking out over to, out to sea. They can't really get any boats in because Cleef up the tide goes out a long way, but they can still go out. We can see at the moment we're just a little bit over the water and people like that. It's part of their sort of generic structure, really. From the pier to pints, but not too many, as we have a long way to go yet. Willie's Wine Bar is a popular haunt of the local social scene. It overlooks the River Humber and Beach, giving spectacular views. It even has its own brewery. Bill, thank you very much, dear, for inviting me along to Willie's Brewery, a very own brewery by the sea. Where did the idea first come from? A long time ago, in, back in about 1989, um, there were one or two breweries about it. There was a slight revival. I think we were in at the beginning of the revival. It seemed like a progression for the, for the business, really. We had been a wine bar before that. So wine bar to brewery is a bit of a jump. Um, but it's one I was quite happy we took. I think Willie's, although it's called Willie's Original, it has evolved <laughs> over the years. And I'm sure it's not quite the same as it was then. I mean, it's a very personal product. Um, I think British Bitter has changed in the last 10 years dramatically. The introduction of American hops in the mid-90s, it's probably 20 years, um, has changed beer considerably, I think. And that kind of flavour, particularly often called IPA, with the American hops giving it a very distinct flavour to what beer used to be like, um, that is the way beer has gone, I think. And to my mind, that is the way a lot of people like it now. We still sell draft bass in a bar. It was a very, very traditional uh, Burton pint. Um, but the, a lot of the guest beers we do are now predominantly American hot variety. And I think Willie's, we have, I say, modernised the beer. So A, we lightened it, and B, we have put more of the American hop element in there. And so it, 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 Willie has evolved definitely over the last few years. Situated in the heart of the town lies Ross Castle. At first glance, it appears to be the ruins of an ancient castle. It's in fact a Victorian folly built in 1863. The Manchester, Sheffield and Lincoln Railway Company built the mock ruin as a visitor attraction following the advent of railways in the 19th century. It was named Ross Castle after the company's secretary, Edward Ross. At the height of the season, thousands flock to Cleethorpe to enjoy all that it has to offer. But the coast brings its own dangers. I'm about to meet a group of people whose work it is to keep us safe. The Cleethorpes are NLI. 
in 2017, the charity is celebrating 30 years of saving lives at sea. Since the station opened in 1987, volunteers have saved over 200 lives and rescued some 800 people. But its history dates back further than that. In 1868, a lifeboat was stationed at Cleethorpes following applications from local residents. The lifeboat was moved to Grimsby in 1882 due to difficulties in manning and launching in the resort. An inshore lifeboat station was re-established in 1987 following an increasing number of call-outs in the area. In the past, it's always been about the rescue. So since we were founded, um, you know, the, the lifeboat's always been there 24 by 7. The crews will drop everything and go out and do the rescue. Over the last few years, we're getting more into prevention. Still keeping the rescue fleet going, but we want to try and reduce the number of people who get into trouble in the first place. And that's, it's a bold target. We're looking to reduce by half the number of people who drown around the coast each year. And we're looking to do that by 2025. The thing with that is it can be all about education. 50% of the people who die each year around the UK coast didn't intend to enter the water in the first place. Do we see a lot of lives lost at sea here in Cleethorpes? Here in Cleethorpes, we're generally lucky. Uh, we, 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 we get called out about 45 to 50 times a year. People losing their life is rare, um, but the potential is always there. There's always a, a few every few years. Join me in part two, where I undertake a spot of animal magic, indulge in some retail therapy and meet some fitties. On Your Bike, proudly sponsored by North East Lincolnshire Council and NG. On Your Bike, proudly sponsored by North East Lincolnshire Council and NG. In the heart of Cleethorpes lies its very own zoo. The Jungle Zoo is one of the newest zoo attractions in the UK. It aims to give people access to wildlife to increase their understanding of nature and the world around them. Home to meerkats, iguanas and even monkeys, it appeals to everyone and is certainly worth a visit, particularly if you're an animal lover. Well, we've recently, we just got a certificate today in the post actually, we've got a certificate of excellence from TripAdvisor. So it's getting, um, getting very popular and each year we get more and more customers through the door as we uh, rebuild and things. So it's getting more and more popular each year. Back in the 70s, it was just a butterfly house. I'm not sure if it had much outside, but um, yeah, mostly butterflies. And then over the years, through various owners, they've um, brought different species in. And so I think there's something here for everybody. Like, um, with rhino the iguana and the tortoise out, everyone likes to have a fuss of them, so it's not just the kids. They can get up close, they, they get more interested in the animals and they ask more questions, whereas if he was just in his, in his enclosure, they'd go, oh look, it's an iguana and move on. So they get more interested, so it's, um, it's a good thing to have, yeah. <laughs> Time for a spot of retail therapy now, one of my favourite hobbies. I'm off to meet a bunch of independent retailers who keep Cleethorpes thriving. These bunch of indies offer everything from ceramic painting to sterling silver. Paul Fair is the owner of Cool Carts, specialising in ride-on cars. Somewhere where I can try many different modes of transport than my e-bike. Paul, lovely to meet you. Thank you very much indeed for your time. First of all, how long have you actually been in the resort operating Cool Carts? Uh, seven years now. We've been here seven years. We started off in a quite small, really, just hiring out the, the three-wheel scooters and uh, also the land sales, which we'll see in a little bit. And we've gradually grown and grown, which people have asked us if we can grow things, you know, what can you do for little kids? And then when we got the electric cars, they then said, well, can you, can you sell them as well? So that's what we've been doing as well. We came up here because we saw, we, well, we, we bought a caravan in Thorpe Park and then we thought it was quite a friendly place to be. And it was due to take retirement. And one of the boys was due to move into high school. And so we thought, well, we'll have a look around and we quite like the place and so we moved up here. What do you like most about living and working in Cleethorpes? Well, we've got fresh air, we've got the sea, we've got friendly people 
Um, and everything's here that we need, basically. We get a lot of repeat customs. So we've, we've seen children grow up from four who are now 11, and their little brothers and sisters who were babies are now going on the cars and, and on the scooters. So in fact, that's quite a satisfying feeling. That's quite nice, yeah. And it, 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 it's not so much a customer, then they become friends. I've left my e-bike in the safe hands of Paul while I explore some of the other shops along here. Next, time for a bit of potluck. It's a ceramic and pottery painting business where children and adults alike can create a unique work of art. I can feel my creative flair coming on already. Where did the idea for this come from? It came from almost divorce. OK. <laughs> Working next door, um, in the next door unit, my husband was a picture framer and I was working with him. Um, I'm quite tidy and organised. David, bless him, isn't. So it was a little bit like this. Um, I think it obviously annoyed him more than me because he bought me potluck. I have a very wide range of pottery. Uh -huh. And I tried to cater for all ages, all pockets, um, and try to make it exactly how I'd want it to be if I came in here. Yeah. So you've tailored it to how you would feel? And... Yeah, I, yeah okay. I think I definitely have. What do the customers most enjoy about coming to your workshop? I think, I don't know if they enjoy it the most, but what I find the most pleasing to myself and to them is people that come in like you and say, oh, I can't do this, I've never done this before. With some help and some guidance, they can usually end up making something absolutely beautiful. From pottery to photography now, I'm off to meet Mark Cribb, who runs a photography business in the resort. Their fully equipped studio offers everything from family portraits to cake smashes. What's so great about being a photographer? Um, what I love about my job is that everything's different. You know, I can go from shooting weddings on a Saturday to shooting fashion in the week and then on to shooting families, meeting lots and lots of different people um, and just love the creative side of it. And for, for me, to make a career out of what started as a hobby, uh, I couldn't really ask for more than that. You know, it's weddings most weekends, and to be involved in a wedding right from the start of the day all the way through to, to the night do, and, you know, it's always a happy day. The atmosphere is always electric at a wedding. Um, so to, you know, be involved in, you know, and having the trust of a bride and groom to, to capture their special day is, is, is unbelievable. And a real satisfying feeling. Is this a great place to work? This is a beautiful place to work. Um, it's a lovely community in the area. You may have seen you know, meeting the other business owners down here. Um, we all get on really well. Um, it's, a, it's a great location. We have the, the studio space at the back here. But also we have Cleethorpes and Cleethorpes Beach and, and lots of scenic areas around, you know, two minutes away from, from where I am. For those cyclists who like their jewellery, a trip to Andrea Warnock's business is well worth a visit. Coastal handcrafts fine and sterling silver, creating bespoke pieces. They inlay sea glass and pottery found on the local shores to create something truly unique for their customers. Andrea, what a fantastic place you have here. Thank you. How did this come about? Um, for years, my, me and my friend Anne have uh, worked together. We are serious crafters. Um, and after working in my shed for some years while uh, fostering, Myself and Anne did uh, craft fairs throughout the UK, the big ones like Bakewell and um, we did Barnsley, places like that. And we just enjoyed ourselves and it started to turn into a little business. Uh, but it's exceeded all our expectations really. We've recently, within the last few months, started doing silversmithing workshops um, and the response to them has been fantastic. The bookings are really good. We've got a lot of people that pick their own piece of sea glass from the beach and they bring it in and we can turn that into a ring or a pendant and um, that's a piece of uh, pottery that was found on this beach but one of the things that we do specialise in is people will find a seashell and they'll bring it in and we'll cast that into solid silver for them as a memory. What shall I wear, I often wonder. Well, if you're often faced with the same dilemma, a retro clothing boutique along Meridian Point may be able to help. Producers of handmade vintage-style clothing and accessories, inspired by the fashion of the 40s, 50s and 60s, the shop is now in its 11th year. It's an independent, family-run business. The mastermind behind this business, uh, the artistic director, is my daughter, Louisa Mashford. Um, this is her brainchild, this is what she's worked at for the past 12 years. Okay. Um, the 
three years in the shop as we are now, but previous nine years has been online. Being a cyclist, it's not particularly the most glamorous of looks. So <laughs> if, if a female cyclist was passing by here, would they be able to come into this shop and find something to make them feel really good about themselves and glamorous? Absolutely, we get a lot of cyclists. In fact, um, only last week we had um, a lady and gentleman on a tandem who came. And um, yes, I mean, if they see anything, quite often they'll say, I'll come back later, and they do. And the first time they come in, it's the usual comment is, oh, there's nothing like this where we live. And so it's seeing that person come in, choose, choose a dress, choose an item, actually put it on. We always ask them to come out and show us what they look like. And it's seeing that the confidence in that person being really transformed. My final stop on my e-bike takes me to meet a group of people living on the fitties. It's been ranked by The Guardian as one of the top 12 places to stay on the UK coast, being described as an otherworldly village in the sand. The fitties means salt marsh and dates back to the 1920s when the area was used for billeting soldiers stationed in the nearby Hillsands Fort during the First World War. Following the war, a local family set up a tent so they could access fresh air to combat ill health. A year later, the very first chalet was erected. The area is now occupied by 300 chalets and hand-built huts, all in a conservation area. Caroline, what a quirky place the fit is. is. What's so great about living here? It's such a unique place. Every chalet is different. Uh, they're just and the design of them, the look of them. Um, the feel of the place is really, really um, natural. There's such a lot of environment, the trees around here. So for me, I really like the fact that it's so close to nature. You're sitting in the garden. There's, um, today I had um, about 20 sparrows <laughs> all in one little tiny bird feeder this big, absolutely going ballistic over the bird seeds. Uh, there's a badger in the garden last night. There's hedgehogs, there's foxes. Um, there's just so much wildlife here. The chalets themselves are so uniquely and historically interesting so um, they're just so varied in design some of them have been here for a very long time mine's been here since around the early 1920s it's just um, the character of the place is you've got it's all original inside it's freezing in the winter <laughs> but it's just a fantastic place to be If you've been inspired to get on your bike and want some tips and advice on cycling, follow the links to our website, estuary.tv. Join me next time when I take a step back in time, enjoy a spot of bowls and meet a group of girls who find cycling a real breeze. On your bike, proudly sponsored by North East Lincolnshire Council and Engie.